say that God blesses with divine ideas. You are on your way to wealth and greatness. Can we? Okay, let's go back to the book of Psalms, chapter 109, verse 164. I said, every great man you know must have great habits. And I have been speaking along this line for this many days. I am not doing it to waste my time. I am doing it to help you create habits that will lift you up and make you the envy of the world. Why is anybody who wants to make the most of his life, to have his life greatly, greatly blessed with value? How many of you would like, like your life to command attention? where people know that these are the things you must do. Nobody stumbles of greatness. You prepare for it. And I'll say this is the first Wednesday. I am begging you to practice these things. Then you may no longer be an ordinary person. Let's hear seven times seven a day. Seven times a day. Do I praise thee? Do I praise thee? Because of thy righteous judgment. David would praise God seven times a day. But let's say chapter 42 of the book of Psalms. We take verse 1. As the heart pants after the as, water As the heart pants after the water so pants my soul, so pants my soul after the water My soul test for my God. My soul tested for God. For the living God. For the living God. When shall I come? Wait. Stop. What we pick from that Bible line? The greatest gift God can give to any one of us is hunger to do well in life. Hunger drives you through laziness. Hunger drives you through excuses. I want to add this night. I beg people who would like to ask God to bless them with hunger to do well in life. Anybody here? Let me see your hand. Are you sure? Because very soon I will give everyone here 10 minutes to pray. And I will crown your prayer. All those who are facing spiritual obstacles, those obstacles shall this night be dismantled. You know, there are people who hear, but they can't practice what they hear. There are those who hear, but they don't understand what was said. Not everyone that these things hears. Not everyone that hears understands. He said, when God gives you creative ideas, you soon become productive. When you become productive, you are going to be successful. When you become successful, you are going to be impactful. When you become impactful, you are going to become an extraordinary person. I'll take you to that in the life of Job. Job said when he stepped into a gathering of elders, everyone will be compelled to stand up for him. Raise your hand and say, one day I shall get there. No, say it louder like you mean it. Let's return to chapter 1 of the book of Mark, verse 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while, rising before, up a great while in the day, morning, he went out. He went and out. And departed into a solitary place. He went to a place where he was alone. And there prayed. And there he prayed. Can we see the book of Genesis, chapter 24, we'll take verse 63. I want to give you what I call revelational knowledge of the secret behind the success of Isaac, Jacob, and Abraham. 
And Isaac went out to meditate in the field. Well, I'll tell it again, don't rush. Isaac went out to meditate in the field. In the field. At the evening time. At the evening time. And he lifted up his eyes. It's okay. He went out to how many of you know that meditation is the breeding ground for divine ideas. There must be a time that you are left alone with God in your house. In my house, there is a time that everybody knows is a holy time for me. I will not see any visitor. Even my family members are asked to leave me alone. My wife has been asking me, when would this stop? And I said at the age of 102. I will stop. We shall begin to live a regular life. That must be a time you are known to meditate, to think, to ponder over what you are going through. But most importantly, to find out from God what you are created for. What you are created for. Until you discover what you are created for, you cannot be a man of uncommon success. We are not all created to do the same thing. There are things you can do which I cannot do. For example, do you know I don't know how to cook? My mother won't let me learn how to cook because I was her only child for many years. My wife won't let me learn how to cook for fear of what my sisters will say. Hey, don't carry your head. All those, can you bring down that hand? Sit like somebody who wants to lay, not like a woman in labor. There must be a time in your life that everything around you must leave you alone to stand alone before God. That is how God, God can bless you with creative ideas with divine ideas with God inspired ideas let's see chapter 63 of the book of Psalms oh God oh God thou art my God thou art my God early now I early speak. in the morning will I seek you my soul tested for thee early in the morning i will suspend all the activities to be with you now you will see why these men were great men david never lost a battle from confronting the bear to the lion to Goliath to the philistines he remained uh, a winner all the time how many of you know men who kneel before god shall stand before any problem what did I say men who kneel before God the more time you spend in the presence of God the more you gather he is anointing and unction let me surprise you more let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 30 verse 37 through 42 you are going to see what Jacob did and Jacob was able to free himself from the oppressive hands of his father-in-law yes sir and Jacob took him rods of green popular and of the jazel and chestnut tree and piled white sprigs in them and made the white appear which was in the rods and he set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs which the flocks came to drink that they should receive when they came to drink and the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle ring streaked speckled and spotted and Jacob did separate the lambs and set the places of the flock. Well, I'm sure you know the story. Um, the agreement was as many um, cows 
as shall have great coats so shall Jacob go home with and he did something that made his own to conceive while looking at an artificial um, what would I call it something he did that made his own animal to look at that color and, and, and conceive that color and give birth to that color that was that was what I call an inspired idea we all need it as a preacher I must be able to find meanings in every Bible passage more than other preachers can find that is the only way I will be in demand <laughs> when I say to the crowd as I preach healing will start as I preach lanes will be healed as without prayer things will happen and one woman when the power of God came upon her she fell and they tried to carry her I asked them to leave her and my wife said he drew tears out of her eyes as I left her to walk on her own she began to shout is this how miracles are done I am able to walk my legs have been seen through and one woman the crowd went excited no matter what you do even as a teacher do you know that teacher that students love I want to sit under under them and listen to them even as a wife any woman here who can do more than a wife can do for her husband <laughs> I was invited by family to Abba to cast out demon that was said to be operating in the daughter-in-law's life I went and the woman brought food to her husband and knelt down before him and said to him you are my first love my last love if there is any other man on earth I will not look at him twice eat my blessed husband the man took the food from her she brought water for washing the man's hand the man the, she knelt down again I, I don't know what she said to the man I only heard the man laugh like a Cheshire cat then it was my turn she knelt down and said wait wait since they said you'll be coming to eat in this house I have told 40 people about it this is my day of honor heaven has remembered me to have allowed you to come to a house and eat out of my kitchen that God the preach will bless me <laughs> I did told out I went to her mother-in-law and said madam this type of demon operating in this woman I need it in my own marriage She asked me, does that mean she has charmed you? And I said, not only has she charmed me, she has charmed me thoroughly. I have to have a woman kneel down before me twice, just to give me water and food. Boy, oh boy. I wish my wife could come and copy this uh, practice. Any one of us who obeys the law of what? The word, the, the law of what? Huh? The law of the extra mile. We used to have a girl who was my secretary here. She got admission to study in Yaba College of Technology. They sent her on an IT to mobile office. On arrival, she went to the manager and said, at the close of work, if there are other things I can type, I will say back and type them. The man was shocked to ask her, are you a Nigerian? She said, yes, yes. 
But where I come from, we practice the law of extra mile. And they began to give her work after work, that is after the close of the day. She will stay back to work for the company. <laughs> after three months, she was made a permanent staff of mobile, paid ten times what I was paying her here. She called me and said, Daddy, I will not return, but I will send my type with which you can hire another secretary and pay her. There's nothing that I said before, nothing can compare with creative ideas, which inspired ideas. And I'm going to ask all of us tonight to pray and ask God, even the way you dress, the way you dress can speak of your creativity and your imagination. I'm happy this night all our girls came with good uh, hair and wig. Have you seen some Nigerian girls who look like um, their madness started from their legs, not from their head? What they call weak is a different color from their own complexion. Some of them wear red. Some wear blue. I asked my wife, my wife are these people mad? She said, no, it's the fashion. What fashion? will make a girl look like a, a mentally sick person. Let God be part of everything you do. You stand out of the crowd as somebody favored by God. Let's go on. Laban was oppressing Jacob. But God gave Jacob, Jacob ideas how to beat Laban. Can you hold somebody's hand and say to him or her, that same God is ready to bless you with inspired ideas. If you believe it, can you shout hallelujah, somebody? <laughs> Let's see the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verse 12. I'm talking about habits that can promote. I know there are also habits that can destroy. And Joshua rose early in the morning. Early in the morning. And the priest took up the axe of the Lord. He rose early in the morning. God must be part of your first hour of your waking hours. You must start with God. Men and brethren, we must learn how to bind all our enemies before we see them. We must learn how to bind all the demons waiting for love before we see them. And you begin to rule over your enemies. Early in the morning, the Bible says, Joshua arose. And when you pray, don't be in a hurry. I don't know if you know, you can lie down and pray. You can kneel down and pray. You can stand up and pray. Pray the book of Genesis chapter 19 verse 27. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the no, place. Chapter 19. Yes. Verse 27. Yes. And Abraham gets up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. To the place where he stood before the Lord. Many great men used to begin their days with God. Show God your respect for him. He must be the first to speak into your life before the problems of this life. Even before your husband, before your wife. But that does not mean sister, doesn't mean you will start your husband of breakfast and tell him you are praying. No, 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 no. Make provision for his breakfast as you pray. 
this night I'm asking us to take a decision to form a habit a habit that will help you men of good habit master their time And he who masters his time has mastered his life. It is easy for television to take your time. And newspapers. Somebody said to me, you don't read newspapers, you browse. And I said, I do it on purpose. Newspapers give report of what the Bible had said shall come to be. There's nothing new there. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Say it loud, but let me hear. I said, men who master their time shall master their life. Now let me put it this way. What you do during your leisure hours when you're free? What you do when you're free will determine what you become tomorrow. If you spend your leisure hour thinking about me, you soon get pregnant. About women, you soon conceive a woman and put her in a family way. And do you know your life will come to a standstill. We must spend our time in a quality manner. Invest your time in search of knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Can you raise your hand and say hallelujah somebody? Let's go on to First Samuel chapter 29 Let's take verse 10 Wherefore now rise up early in the morning Rise up early in the morning With the master servants With yes. the master servant That are come with thee And as soon as ye be up early in the morning And have light Depart Yes God wants us first in the morning To start with this great court Uh, let me add one more thing. Your, your quiet time period, the, the period you pray for, no, the period, the period you observe your morning prayer is what you call your curative session. It's a time you can say to God, I am tired of being sick. Can you heal the anointing? Bless me with divine health. Not divine healing. It's a time you say to God, Father, I don't just don't want to marry any girl. I want to marry the girl you have for me. And please, any man looking for a wife, invest time in asking God to show you the person he wants you to marry. Why? All of us were limited. That a girl is pretty does not make a good wife material. That a man is handsome doesn't make him a husband um, material. Because nobody's face can tell you how long he will live. Can you say a man I know how long he will live? No. I, I was speaking in Toledo, 1975. A woman got up to give her testimony and said, she became a better woman when she became paralyzed. And I asked her to shut up her mouth. She was embarrassing God. If God will punish those who are impatient, then every Nigerian will be paralyzed. Madam, God has no honor in your sickness. He wants you healed. And she said to me, Pray for me. No, 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 no I will not pray. Stand up. 
and the power of God came down upon her. But the girl who brought me to that service on our way home whispered and said, Oh man, I have never seen this before. Nobody will marry you but me. If you will not accept the proposal, I will shoot you and shoot myself. I was tongue-tied. My heart fell into my stomach. Hot blood rushed to my face. I began to sweat in the midst of an air-conditioned car. When we got to her father's house where I was staying, she brought out a gun and, and said to me, and asked me, did you think I was joking? If you do not accept the proposal, you're a dead man. Father, what do I do? And God said, they find your way to the toilet. Jump through the window. Leave that house. I will help you. I will guide you. I asked her, can I ease myself? She said, sure, sure. Go and ease yourself. Come back. Let's conclude the discussion. I jumped through the window. Left for the airport. Never got back to that house. But I had to take a fast of one month. Father, who is the girl you have for me? That girl is a white girl. She is rich. Her parents and God said, shut up your mouth, woman. The best wife for you is an African girl from your village. And God showed me her picture. And I said to God, this is unfair. That white girl. And God said, you, you, my foolishness is more than your wisdom. When I got back to my village and saw my mother, she asked me, is it true you are considering the idea of marrying a white girl? And I said, uh, yes and no. She said, any day I hear you have married a white girl, I'll commit suicide. <laughs> and I said to her, don't worry. I'll not marry any white girl. The one I saw has a gun. I don't want to die violently. You must spend time with God and ask him, Father, what do I do? Who do I marry? Let God make the choice. That a girl is pretty and so what? That a father is rich and so what? God knows who is best for you. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Say it louder, somebody hallelujah. Shout it louder one more time, somebody. Now, when you have made the right choice, you will find peace in your heart. You will find faith in your heart. You will find love in your heart for that person. And God will bless you financially. God does not bless what he does not approve. When you find a man who has no money to pay the demands of your custom, that shows God is not in support of what you're doing. He cannot ask you to marry a girl without giving you money. When God gives a vision, he gives provision also. I'm going to make one more sentence. And we shall begin to pray. Nobody is a failure until he begins to blame others for his problems. Please write it down. What did I say? No man is a failure until he begins to blame others for his problem problems. This Bible provides us with dignified guide for your journey on earth. 
This Bible is the cure for your frustrations and your sicknesses and your poverty and your failure. This book will cure all of them. This book contains everything you need to become everything God wants you to be. Everything God wants you to be. This book contains everything you need to be what God wants you to be. Number four, this book is the voice of God. It is God's recommendation for a life of colorful destiny. You know, when the Bible said, your bed must be undefiled, God is preparing for a beautiful future. When you do not have sex with your wife, the girl you married before marrying her, you know, she will hardly suspect you. She will trust you absolutely and totally and implicitly. She will trust you. She will believe that no girl can, can seduce you. But when you begin to have sex with her, from day one of that marriage, the man will begin to suspect you and mistrust you. There will be a climate of distrust and mistrust and suspicion in the air. If any girl greets you, you give account of that greeting. And if any man hugs her, your blood pressure will rise up. Anyone here, anyone amongst us, can make the most of his life. If only he will ask God to show him how, 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 how. Let's go to chapter 13 of the book of Genesis verse 2. Abraham became the biggest animal farmer through divine ideas. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. The summary that God bless Abraham in all things. Raise your hand and say, God shall bless me with all round success. Say it louder, somebody. Can you shout it, somebody? Let's see the book of Genesis chapter 26, we we'll take verse 12 and we'll take verse 13. Isaac became a rich man and became the first irrigation farmer the world ever knew. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. When there was famine and lack, God showed Isaac what to do to have good harvests. Right where you are this night, this God is prepared to promote you to a level. Can we run to chapter 47, verse 17, verse 27, and we shall close. Now I'll take three questions. Anybody? Chapter 47, verse 17, verse 27. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph. No, 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 sorry, verse 15. And when money fell, when money in, fell the in Egypt, Egypt, and in the land of Canaan, in the land of Canaan all the Egyptians came unto Joseph. When, when money fell in Egypt, let's go to verse 27. When money falls, as money is falling in Nigeria, as I speak, but while others shall be begging and borrowing, we shall be lending out. We shall be giving others surplus of what we have. Yes, sir. Read. And Israel, Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt. In the land of, in the country of Goshen. And they had possessions therein. They had possessions therein. And grew. And grew. And multiplied exceedingly. And multiplied exceedingly. 
That's, that is your destiny. Your financial success shall not be dependent on the economy of Nigeria, but on the economy of heaven. Let me take three questions and we shall pray. Anybody who has a question for me? One hand. What is the one hand? Yes, sir. Come closer. You are too far away, sir. Make your question short and straight to the point. Sir, even as Christians believe that their help comes from God and they pray always, why do most Christians go to meeting doctors? Can you answer that question? Sir, I'm confused about it. Sir. Hey, I can't you should not be, hey, stop. You should give us an answer to that question. Have you ever heard of a school where some people pass, others failed? The husband. Yes. Why? Because she did not follow our instruction and our teaching. Right where we are all seated, how many of you believe that this year shall be your year of multiplication? Anybody here? Let's take the last question from a woman. No, Oga, let's hear from women. Now, only when I do here. Any sister? No sister. Okay. Oga, let's hear your question. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, I want to ask, since uh, you've told us that in the declining economy, Hmm? In the declining economy, yes, we are experiencing, yes, that we are going to be lenders, not borrowers. Yes. The question I want to ask is that: How about believers, like some of us, believers, that, believers, yes, that borrow from the bank to execute certain projects? How do we reconcile that? Okay. Can we see the book of um, Proverbs twenty-two verse nine? Proverbs 22 verse 9. What does it say? He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed for he giveth of his bread to the poor. Now somebody help me. What the Bible says, neither a borrower or a lender be. For a borrower is a slave of the lender. The Bible forbids us from borrowing. I have been, since I met Christ, 1958 to today, I have not borrowed from anybody. Banks chase after me up to this afternoon. Almost every bank in New York wants me to do business with them. They want me to borrow money from them to execute our building projects. And my answer is what? No. Why? Because the God I preach is richer than every bank and any bank. When you run out of money as a believer, you take a fast and pray and ask God, what do I do? What do I do? The act of borrowing is the evidence of the demon of greed in your life. It also shows you are the poor manager of, of resources. And God does not bless a poor manager. You have no business with borrowing. I don't know how much did you borrow. This fellowship will bear me witness. I said in the polytechnic we are building in Abia State, let nobody come to build one naira. And I'll build that school without asking anybody for money. And this God has supernaturally provided. As I speak, the, build, the school is ready for approval. I 
I want you to hear me, sir. This, this God can supernaturally intervene in your financial problems. Let's, let's run to the book of Matthew chapter 17, verse 27. The book of Luke chapter 4, verse 3, 4, 5. God can supernaturally supply your financial. Oh God, sit well, sit well. You, 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 sit well. You are inviting sleep. You tell me demon attacked you. Notwithstanding. Notwithstanding. Lest we should offend them. Yes. Go down to the sea. Go down to and the sea. And cast and hook. And, and, take up, and, hook. and take up the fish that take up the first off. fish you find when thou hast opened his when mouth when I open the mouth thou that shalt fish. find a piece of money look up and look at me sir in 1978 my mother sent for my wife and myself to the village we went my mother said I watched you on television preach you with your fat cheeks and bulging stomach you look like a rich man People don't know you are hopelessly and wretchedly and stupidly poor. You don't have a house in our village. Uh -uh. Ma, I didn't know building a house was an achievement. She said it was even an attainment also. And I said, okay, my wife and I will tell God this night to give us money. Tomorrow morning we'll bring you that money for you to start building. My mother got angry. She said, you sound like God lives in your house. This is why I hate all these so-called Pentecostals. You guys are crazy. And I said, but he lives in our house. We don't talk this morning before coming to see you. She said, get back to this place. On the dot of 5.30 a.m., a man came all the way from my back. A man I didn't know who did not know me. I later knew eight years after that he was an elder of that possible church along Ezekiel Road in Abba. He said he was sleeping. God woke him up by four and said, my servant who lives in Uyo had financial needs. This is the address. This is the name. Gather money and get there before 6 a.m. When he came, and told me this story we prayed for him and blessed him and drove to my village and gave my mother this money my mother counted it and said hey 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 old boy this money can buy only two plus of life if you told God yesterday about this need and he gave you money this money go back and tell him the money was not enough you need four plus of life not two I said, my, stop shouting. I will go back and tell him. We'll come back tomorrow with money. <laughs> she said, here you go again. I'm waiting for you here. We returned to you, said the same prayer. The same man came back with more money than he brought the previous day. We will go to my village and give the money to my mother. She counted the money. I said to him, hey, sit down. I sat down. Look into my eyes. I looked into to her eyes. She said, I am your mother. Uh -huh. She asked, are you an arm robber or a preacher? That same God who said to Peter, go to Oron River. The first fish you find will carry all the money we need. He's still on duty. He's still on duty. He's still on duty. He's still on duty. We were in Calabar to preach for one of our sons. And God said to me, can you see this building they have started that spent 10 years without completing it? I'll send somebody who will give you money to give to him that the building be completed. I told my wife, that night, while she was sleeping, my phone rang. Somebody said, God has spoken to him to give me 13 billion for 30 pastors who are my sons in the Lord. As a man to shut up his mouth, 13 billion for 30 pastors, they will die. Make it 1 billion. 
My wife who was sleeping woke up and asked me, do you know the difference between 13 and 1? And I said, yes. She said, you don't. Why do I say, my head, my damn sleep? This is not, it doesn't concern you. Sleep, 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 sleep. Can you imagine me sharing 30 billion among, among 30 pastors? That is more than 500 million. Some of them will die. No, I gave a jeep to a man. He didn't need to see the jeep. He died before the jeep got to him. I am saying this to say that God can supernaturally supply. And that God is God I preach. How many of you believe? Raise your hand and say hallelujah, somebody. Well, I am not saying you should go about begging for money. The Bible teaches that any man who cannot walk should not eat. I don't know why he has read the Bible very well. Adam did not, was not allowed to eat of that garden until he had dressed the garden. He was not allowed to eat of that garden until he dressed the, the garden. God does not do business with lazy girls. As a girl, you must refuse free lifts. When men stop their cars, oh, I want to give you a lift. Tell the man to move on. You are not interested. It can lead to seduction. It can lead to raping. Particularly when they say to you, somebody somewhere wants to give you more money. Nobody can trip you unless you are greedy. That man who wants to give you money, how much has he? A man called me and said, I'm calling you from Amsterdam. We're coming to you to start a big business. The capital is $50 million. You have been chosen to be the chairman of the company. Uh, we'll soon be in New York, but you must pay token fee before you start functioning as the chairman. Father, who is this man? God spoke to me. I called him back and said, my friend, God told me you're not calling from Amsterdam, but from Abba. God said you are also a thief. You have been duping people. I am the last man you will dupe. And I said to him, God has also spoken to me that you're a stupid, foolish man. If you have plan to hold, do business in New York, why would you call a pastor? Why not another businessman who knows the landscape of business? You're a crook, and if you call me again, you will have one stomach that will last for seven days. Every one of us must find what you can do to save people. Money is remuneration given for services rendered. Save, and people will bless you with money. And there are so many ways to save, very many ways to save. For example, in New York, we are looking for an informed mechanic who can repair any, say our trucks are lying down here. Because we have no, we have no good mechanic in New York. We go to an to bring mechanic to Lagos. But if we can find a good mechanic here in New York, that person will be money. You will be in charge of all these our trucks and will pay you good money. We are looking for good drag cleaners who can drag clean beautifully well. Not those who will burn dresses given to them. Are you still here? We are looking for school managers who can help to manage our schools. We are looking for teachers who can teach in our schools. Can we all stand up? Everybody, take 10 minutes. Tell God what you want him to do for you. Ask him to give you inspired ideas. Creative ideas. Can you raise up your hand and please, I want to hear a welfare prayer. What do you want God to do for you? Great ideas will separate you from ordinary men. 
I said nothing nothing is as profitable as inspired ideas I said nothing compares with the potency of inspired ideas nothing one great idea will change your tomorrow and change your life if you are going to command attention everywhere you go God must bless you with inspired ideas can we pray I want to hear your voice speak to God tell God you are desperate you don't want to be an ordinary person ask God to review your habits and take away habits that can destroy and ask him to bless you with happy that can promote. Shall we pray?
is called Emmanuel. Holy Spirit, be my comforter. Holy Spirit, take control. As I walking along the way, the road is so narrow. Holy Spirit, be my God. Oh, Holy Spirit, be my comforter. Holy Spirit, take control. As I'm walking along the way, the road is so narrow. Holy Spirit, be my guide. Holy Spirit, be my comforter. Holy Spirit, take control. As I walk in along the way, the road is so narrow. Holy Spirit, be my God. Holy Spirit, be my God. Holy Spirit, take control. As I'm walking along the way, the road is so narrow. Holy Spirit, be my guide. Holy Spirit, be my comforter. Holy Spirit, take as I walk in my long way, we will be so tired. Holy Spirit, be my God. Holy Spirit, be my God. Holy Spirit, take as I'm walking along the way, the road is so narrow. Holy Spirit, be my God. Madam, stand up. You look young. You act like you are 300 years old. Father, everyone who is standing in this peculiar, concentrated presence of yours, let everything, every man, every demon, every sickness, every failure that mocks him or her be mocked by your presence. Father, for reasons I don't know, we found favor in your sight, and you promised us 1,000 multiplied blessings this year. Father, that figure will not stagger us. You asked Moses, 
against the army of Egypt charging against Israel. What do you have in your heart? He said, only a staff. What can a staff do in the midst of armed soldiers? Father, you were to show that it is not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. When the army of Ammon and Moab and Mansiah came against Judah, you asked Joshua to raise only a song. How can a man raise a song in the midst of so many enemies? But Father, that is your own way of solving problems. Therefore, our eyes shall not be on that figure 1,000, but shall be on you. It shall be on you. It shall be on you. It shall be on you. You made a choice. You chose those who hear what you have asked me to teach on inspired ideas. Creative ideas. Productive ideas. And your people have heard me. But they must show them how to apply what they have heard. Let none go back the same. Yeah. Teach us how to have good habits yeah. that will promote us in your presence. Yeah. We don't want to be like ordinary men. We shall have no business with native doctors. We shall, not, we shall have no business with borrowing from anybody. We shall always have more than enough. Yeah. Whichever family we have come from, each one here shall become the men, man, the men, woman of those families. Yeah. But Father, speak to us. Tell us what to do. Show us how to obey you. Show us how to conceive in the bowel of our spirit that which we are expecting you to do for us. Let none end this year as an ordinary person. Let the miracle start now. We will meet next Wednesday. We shall use your body and your blood to confirm and affirm and attest to the fact that that spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead is already in us. And we are going to become unstoppable and unmolestable. And we shall not die like ordinary men. We shall become too dangerous for any enemy to handle. Father, let the miracle start. Yeah. Every voice that speaks against us shall speak no more. Yeah. Thank you for hearing me. For I ask in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let's give the Lord a resounding clap of him. Amen. We shall conclude our teaching on soul winning tomorrow. And all zonal leaders are required to attend. Any group that shall fail to attend, we are going to change your leadership. Choir, we want to see those who have nominated to produce your album. We will put money in their hands to help them start the project. Youths want to see your, your ESCO, your executive committee members. Come, don't go, Oga, don't go. It's not good. Go back. Don't work out on God. When you go before the grace is said, you walk out of, you walk into disgrace. Don't do it again. We are going to give a second offering. Pastor Joe will lead us will quickly give that offering. And uh, and the chairman for the night will come up and dismiss us. 
before he comes to lead us, hold somebody's hand and say to him or her, I am a candidate of 1,000 blessings. God will multiply me. God will instruct me. God will make me the main man of my family. It shall be so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Pastor Joe, lead us in chorus. Please, everybody, you must dance. dance out to show happiness. God has promised so much to us. Let's show him how much we love him. Everybody testifies, you are good. You are good, Jehovah, you are good. Everybody testifies, you are good. You are good, Jehovah, you are good. Everybody testifies, you are good. You are good, Jehovah, you are good. Alpha and Omega, you are good. You are good, Jehovah, you are good.
Amen. Many of us take our worship service for granted. When we minister outside here, we miss our band and our singing team. To have this kind of worship service, how much do they normally charge us, Pastor Joe? Last week, how much did they charge? More than three million naira. Because song is an invitation that God cannot refuse. Any man who knows how to worship this great God will never lose any battle. All the doors of heaven will open at the command of a good song. Next Wednesday, I would like to pray for every pregnant woman who can find her way to our service. That that pregnancy will be a trouble-free pregnancy. Next one is uh, by the facts of our communion service, we shall be confirming and affirming that you are now a candidate for 1,000 blessings. Amen. But I'll be teaching on how to speak and make the impossible possible in your life. I'll show you what I call the spirit behind the word we speak. And how your spoken word can bring down the supernatural power of God. I am back to the altar because God has continued to confirm that no member of good fellowship shall age without a house. Father, I dedicate this building to you. Cover this building with the blood of Jesus and let an angel be appointed to keep watch over this building. But it's also a reminder of those who have been waiting for their own house to emerge. Let the miracle start this night. Those they know, let them bless them. Those they don't know shall bless them. At the end, let there be a house they can call their own. Father, I know you are a faithful God. I can see these houses in my spirit. I will show your children how to actualize this promise. Thank you, faithful Father. Your people have been blessed this night. We are asking for evidence that they have really heard. Make each one a proof producer. Thank you. For I pray in Jesus' name. Whenever you are, raise up your hand. In three minutes, just thank the Lord, our chairman, who will come up and say the grace. Raise up your hand. Thank God for this night. Ask God to remind you the things he wants you not to forget. In the name of Jesus, in the exalted name of Jesus, the Lord answer our prayers.